The scientific process evolved over hundreds and hundreds of years, arising from the dark days of alchemy. So what is the scientific process? It's this idea that one has an observation, and from that, they give an explanation, a hypothesis of why they think they observed what they observed. Well, if you have a hypothesis and you understand what's going on, you should be able to make, of course, a prediction of what's going to happen. You have a hypothesis to why it occurred. You can make the prediction. Once you have the prediction, well, you need to test that prediction. And of course, when you run a test, you make observations. And there's the scientific process in its most simple form. Observation, hypothesis, prediction, and testing. So Newton's underneath the tree and the apple falls on his head. He comes up with a hypothesis. He comes up with a theory that two bodies of mass attract one another. Well, he goes and makes a prediction and says, I guarantee you my theory's good because it should work under a peach tree or a pear tree or any type of tree. Indeed, he runs the test. He makes the observation and it holds true. He runs the test over and over for not just human heads and pieces of fruit falling from trees, but different types of bodies of masses. And every time it holds true, he now has a valid theory. Well, you've also heard of a law. So the difference between a theory and a law. It's kind of a soft difference, but in generally speaking, a theory is a general statement that explains a large number of observations. A law, on the other hand, is a specific statement that is never violated in the natural universe. To put it another way, an experiment, for the most part, attempts to explain why the observations occur, and a law is a mere statement of fact. It is a fact that when something falls, gravity will pull it at 9.8 meters per second square. Exactly as to why two bodies attract one another, well, that's not exactly known. Theories. We make a lot of theories. There are two key characteristics of a valid theory. You've already come across one of those. It needs to be predictive. If you have a good theory and it holds true, then you should use that theory to be able to predict what the results will be. But the second not often touted characteristic of valid theory is that of falsifiability. It must be falsifiable. That is, if your theory is false, there's got to at least be a way to show it's false. Now, sometimes people have ideas as to why something occurs, but there's no way to prove it false. In other words, it's just conjecture. It's not really a valid theory.